Welcome to Asia Briefing podcast series. My name is Israel America Jones with the Zan Shear and Associates. Today with me in Guangzhou is Ms. Daisy Huang, head of the Audit and Compliance Corporate Accounting Services with the Zan Shear and Associates. As a specialist foreign direct investment practice providing business advisory, accounting, tax and payroll services to companies investing in Asia. In this accounting update, Daisy will discuss important regulatory updates regarding permanent establishment and how these regulations affect foreign companies in Asia. Daisy, can you please explain what permanent establishment is? Permanent establishment, which we usually refer to as PE in a short name, means a fixed place of business through which the business of the enterprise is wholly or partially carried on. To qualify for a PE, the following three conditions should be met. First, there is existence of a place of business. Second, place is relative fixed. Then last condition is the business should be exercised whole or partially through that place. Can you give us some examples of permanent establishments? Yeah, here we have some typical type of PE. And service PE is the one we are more familiar. Service provided by an enterprise through employee or other personnel engaged by enterprise may constitute a PE if such activity lasts for more than 183 days or 6 months within any 12 months period. Service we mentioned here including engineering, technology, management, designing, training, and consulting. Another type is a dependent agent that habitually exercises an authority to conclude contract in China in the name of the non-resident enterprise will also constitute a PE in China. Also, a building site, a construction assembly or installation project or related supervisory activity in connection therewith but only where such size project or activity continue for a period of more than 6 or 12 months also constitute a PE. Daisy, you talked a bit about service PEs and lately there is some confusion about 6 month rule and the 183 day rule. What's the difference between these two? Currently, China signed double treaty agreement with 97 country plus Hong Kong and Macau. 6 month rules apply to most of existing double treaty agreements. This rule states that for a period or periods aggregating more than six months within any 12 months period relevant to service provider, you start counting from the first month you arrive. Please note, you don't have to be working in China the whole month. One day is enough to count for months. If no expatriate is working for 30 consecutive days, one month can be deducted. Recently, China has made an 180 days agreement with countries such as Singapore, Belgium, Macau, and Finland. This agreement provides more favorable regulation for companies or people from that country. The 183 days rule stays for a period or periods aggregating more than 183 days within any 12 months period relevant to service provider. Similar at six months rule, you start counting from the first day you arrive until the last day you render the service. Furthermore, more than one employee is counted as one day. Therefore, how to better arrange the traveling plan in China might have a great impact on overseas service provider regarding to their PE exposure and the relevant tax obligation. A few of our clients raised concerns regarding the difficulty of transferring the service income to overseas companies. How come? China Tax Bureau raised more regulation to strengthen the control of non-resident enterprise. Nowadays, if a domestic company wants to transfer service fee to non-resident enterprise, it needs to follow some new procedures. An MRE needs to provide registered contract, tax receipt, and the MRE also needs to provide evidence to prove it doesn't constitute a PE in order to claim for free of corporate income tax. This new practice 
could be cost and time consumable to MRE if documents and procedures have not been prepared or follow up in a good way. What are the tax obligations for a service PE and a non-PE? There are mainly two kinds of income tax for involved. The individual income tax we call IIT and the corporate income tax we call CIT. Generally speaking, IIT is influenced by three things. First, the period spent in China, and second, where the income is driven from, and the third, where the salary payments are settled. Normally, expenditure is free of individual income tax if he or she only stayed in China for less than 183 days and their home country have double treaty agreement with China. However, if the expatriate renders service in China constitute a PE, the expatriate is subject to IIT from his or her first day arrived in China for such project. 183 rule is not available for this case. Regarding to corporate income tax, for PE case, tax is calculated by gross revenue times deemed profit margin times tax rate 25%. If for PE does not keep separate accounts and profit apportioning is not customarily used, profit of a PE will be determined on a deemed basis. The deemed profit margin is set by China Tax Bureau and its range from 15% to 50% based on different type of services and the negotiation with local tax bureau. Non-case PE, on the other hand, do not need to pay corporate income tax based on the double treaty agreement. Non-PE case, on the other hand, do not need to pay corporate income tax based on the double treaty agreement. Do royalty payments create a PE? Royalty payment itself don't constitute a PE. However, after sales service or service provide under product warranty or providing of training courses may constitute a PE if all the PE requirements are met. Royalty payment may apply to 70% to 10% withholding income tax according to double treaty agreement. This seems really interesting, all of these different rules and regulations that you've given us. But say that I'm a shareholder of a Hong Kong trading company, and I also worked as a general manager for a Chinese Wolfie. Does my role in China create a PE risk for the Hong Kong company? Do I have to pay income tax on my Hong Kong generated revenue if I've stayed in China for over five years? Well, actually, the five-year rule only applies to salary income. The dividend distributed from Hong Kong will not be taxable in China as the income is not generated from China. Moreover, if there is no additional common grant connecting the Hong Kong company and China Wufi, such as service agreement or secondment agreement, etc., this structure itself may not expose a PE risk. Daisy, thank you very much for covering the 183-day rule, then the six-month rule, and how that can influence foreign companies that are coming to China. If this is a topic that was interest of you, please continue to look on Asia Briefing to find more articles, magazines, and books about this issue, and look forward to you joining us again at Asia Briefing Podcast.